We're here at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, for the Air Force's inaugural launch of 2017 here from the Space Coast. The Air Force's Space-Based Infrared Systems Program completes a major milestone. And here it is, the C-5 containing the third Cybers Geo Satellite touches down here at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. Successfully delivering the Geosynchronous Earth Orbit, or GEO, Satellite Flight 3 to the Space Coast in Florida continues to fulfill the Space and Missile Systems Center commitment to the missile warning, missile defense, and intelligence communities. That was awesome. It was great. Captain Curtis and his crew from the 22nd Airlift uh, Squadron did a fantastic job. Smooth flight. It was a great onload. They did a great job. Without their capability and support, we wouldn't be able to execute our missions. We're responsible for monitoring the satellite health at all times. I just got an update from the team that, uh, that everything was nominal, battery charging and purging, and everything was very good throughout the trip. So the satellite's in good shape. The C-5 Galaxy crew from the 22nd Airlift Squadron out of Travis Air Force Base, California, transported the payload from the Lockheed Martin Satellite Integration Facility in Sunnyvale, California. We don't always get to fly missions like this, so it's very rewarding when we get to do a special mission. It's really cool, you know, it's not something we get to do very often, and, you know, knowing that we're moving something that's going into space, it just, it's awesome. So we'll be uh, working through the night to get it unloaded, get the uh, container cleaned and get it into the airlock, and then we're going to try and get the uh, vehicle vertical, and this way we can prep for the hoist and get it onto the dolly and start all our uh, pre-launch tests. So it's very exciting to be a part of this mission. Uh, one of the greatest rewards that I think I've ever had is participating in launches. It's where, as an acquisition person, you can actually see the benefit of your endeavors uh, to great benefit for the nation. The Sibbers Constellation is designed to replace the Legacy Defense Support Program Satellite Constellation. Sibbers will continue to provide significantly enhanced capabilities to support missile warning, missile defense, battle space awareness, and technical intelligence missions. The Sibbers team is led by the Remote Sensing Systems Directorate at SMC. To lead teams is what the Air Force is all about, and so to have that opportunity as lieutenant and captain is the name of the game here, so at a young age to be able to have that type of impact is huge. The combined government and contractor team executes ground activities one step closer to launch at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, to include the ICE. The integrated crew exercise is designed to provide the Sibbers Flight 3 launch team an opportunity to exercise day of launch concept of operation. The rehearsal anomaly team, they call them rats, and they give us many different scenarios and they put our team into many different scenarios that we could encounter during day of launch. And so this is a great exercise to allow the team to exercise all the processes and uh, know all the launch commit criteria so that if we encounter something on an actual day of launch, we know how to uh, promptly respond and correctly respond. It's important to do this exercise because we want to ensure that our teams are collectively working together from the uh, contractor and government perspective and ensuring that firsthand we're doing something that's needed for our warfighters. So the ability for us to be able to execute this launch successfully and uh, get our satellite up into orbit. Team members are staged at both the Atlas Space Operations Center and Hangar AE at Cape Canaveral. It's just always an honor to work with uh, the men and women that help put this together. It, there's countless man hours and uh, when it comes together it really is a miracle and it's, it's just something that uh, I continue to be impressed that we continue to do the, execute these miracles all the time. And this is kind of one of those culminating points where you bring both teams together and, and exercise together and it just naturally generates an excitement as we're getting closer to launch. The GEO Flight 3 satellite payload has two infrared sensors, a scanner and a starer that have the capability to detect and report missile launches around the globe. It's a big impact toward improving the national security for our country and improving the uh, knowledge of activities around the world that are critical to our, to our warfighters. The GEO sensors also support the nation's ballistic missile defense system, expand technical intelligence, and provide situational awareness on the battlefield. It's very nice to be working in a job that actually covers across the entire Department of Defense and the United States as far as a protection factor. So the first thing that would alert us to an enemy attack if they're launching nuclear weapons 
would be the programs we're working on right now, and this launch in particular is in that family for the missile warning. It's one of the best jobs I can think of just due to how far it reaches. The SIBRS program is designed to replace the Legacy Defense Support Program missile warning and missile detection satellites that have been in operation for over 40 years. What's really neat, if you look back at the whole history of this mission going back into the, uh, the DSP satellite and the number of uh, 23 satellite launches there, we're into our third launch for the uh, GEOs portion of this architecture. We're bringing some great capability on board. It's going to be neat to be able to see this come to fruition with decades of uh, work that, on a lot of other people's shoulders to get us here. We're now atop the Vertical Integration Facility here at Space Launch Complex 41. The Atlas V team is making final preparations to boost the next generation satellite, delivering enhanced capabilities to the warfighter. Mechanical MLP roll preps complete. Well, essential personnel are clear of MLP and warning lights are flashing amber. Stand here, raise under carriage jacks. Stand here and proceed with MLP transport to pad. Roger. The Atlas V, a mobile launch platform, weigh over 2 million pounds. Traveling at a speed of two to three miles per hour, the rocket will take approximately 20 minutes to make its way a quarter mile to the launch pad. It's a great day for Sibbers as we roll out to the pad. Uh, getting this rocket lined up on the launch pad is a culmination of years of work. But getting this rocket together, the team that makes sure that mission assurance happens day in and day out, that we have uh, assured access to space, put a pricey satellite on the top of a rocket and launch it into orbit is never a trivial matter and partnering with the 45th Space Wing, ULA, and uh, LE out at SMC to get us here today. It's always been my dream to be in the space business, and uh, I've been lucky 37 years, I've been doing this same work from almost day one. To work with a bunch of people that are dedicated to do this type of thing and, and trying to launch a rocket takes thousands of people, not hundreds, but thousands of people. And the capabilities that this spacecraft brings for the guys and gals out in the field who are fighting the fight is, is unbelievable. And I pinch myself every day. This is like space camp for uh, adults out here. It takes a lot to get here. Just all the trials and tribulations and literally the thousands of people that it takes to get here. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Sivers. The Atlas V rocket launches from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, carrying the third Sibbers Geo Satellite into orbit. It's really cool to see the impacts that we have on the warfighters. The capability that Sivers delivers is, is amazing. I have some friends that are Marines or soldiers, and to let them know, hey, this is the type of things that we are doing with missile warning, they really know what that is, and they feel it, and they, they love that we're able to provide that capability. I worked on spacecraft production leading up to launch, and now I'm getting to see what's actually coming down off of our sensors and off of our entire constellation. Never, never thought that I would be a part of such awesome stuff, so I'm, I feel very lucky. I never thought 12 years ago that I'd be uh, helping to launch satellites into space and, uh, and, and doing this uh, really cool job, but this one is, is special to me because of all the folks I got to meet and uh, behind the scenes, you know, nobody sees the folks that, that helped to put the satellite up on orbit and the warfighters get to use that. This has been a fantastic experience and it's nothing but top-notch people I've got to work with, so I wouldn't trade it for anything. The mission area is, is honestly one of the most direct paths that we have to the warfighter and making sure that they have the support that they need. And that space is the way we're going as a nation. We need to be able to put systems up that can be protected and, and make sure that all of our systems are going to be working properly. This is the force of the future. I never thought when I joined the Air Force that I would be doing anything like this. And just so to be a part of a launch like this and then also to represent the Air Force and getting our mission out there is really a, an honor, honestly. Passing through two minutes into the mission, everything looks good, as expected. Now we have stage separation. We have spacecraft separation.